Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements tutorial, we're going to be changing the sky on this picture into a sunset sky. Let me just show you that. There we go. Sunset sky, just like that. Now there's some real tricky things about doing this, and we can see those right here. Let me just bring our size down a little bit here. There we go. So there's the original and there's the sunset sky. Obviously the hard part is how do you mask out all of those little leaves in there, all that little itty bitty stuff to be able to put that sky in behind. Now of course we could come in and carefully delete all this stuff, you know, zoom in real tight and try to do real careful selections around all this stuff, but you go insane doing that. You need to have an automated way of doing that. We could try using one of the standard techniques, the first thing that would come to mind, and I actually gave this a shot first, and that is, let me see if I can show this here, and hide that, hide that, and there we go. This level here is using the Refine Edge tool, and that's the mask that the Refine Edge tool is able to do. Now what I did here was I created a selection around the leaves, and then used the Edit Refine Edge tool to refine that edge to move that edge in. And as you can see, it worked out very, very well out here. Did a good job on the outside of the tree, but it couldn't get to the inside. The reason for that is because the Refine Edge tool refines the edge of your initial selection. And the selection was out here. So it could only get so far in from that initial selection. If it will go the rest of the way, it would be a great tool, but again, obviously, it doesn't do that. So the Refine Edge tool wouldn't work on this very difficult kind of a masking job. So let me show you how we approach this and take care of this particular one. The first thing you need to do is you need to look at the image and decide what the differences are between your foreground object and the background object. And we have two primarily here. One, the foreground object is in silhouette, so it's very, very dark. There's a slight green tint to it, but it's mostly just a dark silhouette. The sun's you know, actually right there, so it's a dark image, and the background is light. Also, this is all greens around here, all green tones, green and brown tones, and the background is white and blue. So we can use those two elements of this to create a careful mask, but it's a two-step process. We'll be using the color differences first, and then we'll be using the value differences second to create our mask. Okay, I'm going to start off with a brand new file. Let's just close that one out. And here we go, here's the original photograph. As you can see, there's no layers, nothing over here at all to work with. And I'll bring this down in size a bit and just kind of dock it into our window. There we go. And let's just set this to fit on screen. So there's the original picture. So the first thing I always do on anything like this is I make a copy of my background, just like that, and then hide the original. This is a habit that I'm in, so I can always go back to a clean image. In case I mess things up, I can go back to my clean image. We're not going to, but again, it's just a habit I'm in, and I think it's a good one to be in. Make a copy and work on it. Only work on copies and on, on your original image. Of course, we'll also be saving this as a new file name, and with the layers, we'll automatically save as a PSD file instead of the JPEG that it was initially. So that also gives us a backup that way. Okay, so there's our first step. Now, I need to do a couple of things. We're going to want a mask of the bottom area down here with the horizon line. So I want to make a nice mask of the horizon line. And we'll use the refine edge on that to get these trees over in here. We'll do the, the whole tree thing at a second pass. But let's just first get our horizon line taken care of. So I'm going to zoom in just like this. And then I'll grab a lasso tool, doesn't matter which one, I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to make a selection just outside 
like this and then where I have some nice tree line I'll come in and go along, along that edge in there hold the shift bar down and you can then move that selection over now you can't really see where the horizon is through here so just coming along anywhere in here is fine and I can begin to see it again up in here so at this point I'll begin to more closely follow the shape of that horizon line and again with this particular tool you click and then move to your next point and then click on that next point and Photoshop Elements fills in the lines in between the points that you're clicking so it's a real easy to control tool for this kind of simple selection okay click outside hold the spacebar down and I'll go down at the bottom click outside just outside like that spacebar down and let's just move clear over to here and click there click up here hold the spacebar down and back to my start so there's that first selection I now want to refine the edge but all I care about is just this part here with these trees everything else is fine so let's go back to my tool let's go back up here to select and we're going to refine edge and I'll set my tool at the overlay which is what I normally use in here I'll leave all these settings at their defaults and I'm just going to paint right over those trees just like that and that should give me a nice clean edge on the trees a little bit right there and there we go that takes care of that now I'm going to save this selection I want to output this to a selection choose OK so there's my selection I'll now save this selection we'll come back to the selection later so let's go up to select and save selection I'll just call it horizon and choose OK and then we can just deselect that all right that's step one that's taken care of and again that's for a future step just wanted to get that out of the way now the next thing we need to do is to separate the sky from the tree and we'll be doing this in two steps first I want to get rid of all this blue stuff in here so I want to convert the blue into kind of a mid-tone gray that matches the cloud skates try to get the the sky as uniform in value as possible and we can do that with a real nice tool over here it's called the replace color tool click on that we'll bring that up here we go I'll start off with the replacement color click in here and get a little eyedropper and I'll just choose something in the middle of my clouds it's kind of a mid-tone gray there we go choose OK so that's what I want to replace it with you can now go up here to the selection tool and I'll click anywhere in here it takes that blue value and then converts that to that gray value don't worry about down here all we care about is just the tree so I'll come in and I'll click into these blue values again using the plus setting and let's get as much of this converted over as we can and that's better so we're pretty good it'll still take a little bit of cleanup we can do that cleanup easily enough once we get our layer mask done okay we're better let's come down and change this down here I'm going to lighten that up a little bit just move the, the lightness up that's better and then back up here again and so we can click in some more of these spaces and just lighten things up I'm just clicking around and just trying to get as much as I can in here to match I'm now clicking on the clouds themselves, so kind of yellowish clouds, and that converts those clouds more over into that color. Okay, they're pretty, pretty good now. If we bring the fuzziness up, that's going to give us even a bit better. Now I still need to clean out these areas, but we're getting pretty close. You know, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to leave the fuzziness, I think, down. Let's bring the lightness up again a bit more. And you can see what's happening we're beginning to move the values away from the tree values. So it's now all light up here and all dark in the tree and if you carefully watch the tree we're not really losing any detail in the tree we're doing a pretty good job here keeping our tree detail again don't worry about down here that's why we made that other selection previously the horizon selection so we're fine 
But I'll lighten it up like that. I think that's pretty good. We'll fix this stuff up here a little bit later. Choose OK. So there we go, kind of a strange looking layer. Real high contrast, but all of the leaf shape is still fine because again, we changed the colors in here for that leaf shape, that's good. Let's now make a copy of this. Another one of my habits, I'll just hide that. I'll tend to make copies of layers partway through on your know, partial stages. I can always go back to a previous stage if I need to, a previous step. So it's kind of saving steps as I'm working up. Okay, on this one, let's now convert this to a straight black and white. That'll make our, our sky white and the tree black. I'll make this stuff black and white down here too, but you can again ignore this stuff. All we care about is the tree right now. So filter and adjustments, and then right over here we have threshold right there. Now what this does is it allows you to make your image a straight black and white image. And you can control where that shift happens with this slider control. So what you want is you want to keep as much detail in the tree as we can. There's, you know, right in the middle will be about normal. I'm going to bring a little more detail back in. Just like that. So in here someplace, I'm going to use 154 as my attempt on this. If I go too far this way, I begin to lose tree detail. If I go too far this way, I'm going to begin seeing sky back in here again. I don't want to have that. So I want to be in the middle someplace, but a little more towards the dark side instead of towards the light side. It's kind of a, a judgment call in here. And if it doesn't work out exactly right, you can always clean this up fairly easily once this this step is done. So I think about here, about 149 or so, looks pretty good. Again, don't worry about that stuff up there. We'll take care of that in just a little bit. Choose OK. OK, we now have a straight black and white version with the tree separate from the sky. Now that means that we can select just the black and then use that to make a layer mask. So let's go back to our original layer. I'll drag it up here and give myself a new layer. I'm going to move this above that. We're done with that layer, so I'll just move this above that layer. So this becomes our new kind of background layer in here. So this one, this is, is the replace color. So we did there. This one is the threshold. Oh, make sure I'm on the right tool here. There we go. That's our threshold layer. So on this layer, take the magic wand and just click into the black someplace. That selects all the black, including that stuff up there. That's fine. So there's our selection. Let's come down to this layer and let's make a layer mask right there. Click on the add layer mask button and there's a layer mask. Now it gives us the layer mask showing our tree in white and then hiding everything else and that's Fine, let's just now hide that you can see there. There's the tree, and we're seeing the clear background in behind. If you want to make sure that this is okay, we can just put a kind of a, a quick orange layer in here. Let's just come down to layer just underneath of that, and let's do layer, new fill layer, solid color, choose okay. I'm just going to choose just a basic orange. There we go, so that's looking okay. Now he has some spots up in here as you can see. We need to fix those spots and we need to fix the horizon. And all of that is done here on the layer mask. So let's grab our magnifying glass. We're going to zoom up here and let's zoom in on the top. Now, as you can see over here, black is supposed to be hiding everything and white shows. So if I'm on the layer mask side, look for that light blue outline. If it's over here, double click over there so you can see that light blue outline. And then we're going to be using black paint and just paint over these spots on the layer mask. Black paint. There we go. And that will then hide those. So just kind of erase those out by using the black paint. And then space bar to move the picture over a little bit. And let's just clean this stuff out here. Again, I'm using black paint on the layer mask. And that's hiding that. That orange is in behind. And we're just making this area clear by a black paint on the layer mask. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, we need to fix that 
bottom of the picture and that's where our horizon selection save comes in. We're still in our layer mask over here and let's go to select load selection and there's the horizon choose OK. Now I need to fill this area with white so it shows just like the tree does so let's reverse our colors and click in there with white and that's helping to do that. This, that's As you can see here it's kind of filling in by what's black over here so maybe the easier way is just to grab the paintbrush. Let's increase the paintbrush size a bit. 91. And I'm just going to paint in here. Anywhere where I'm seeing orange. Just paint that in. I'm just painting in white on the bottom down here. Let's make sure we get the whole bottom section. And by painting in white, I am adjusting that layer mask to then show that part of the image. So there we go. There's the bottom is showing again. Let's see how we're doing and deselect. Okay, so we have our tree. You can see we're already taking care of that big problem there of masking the tree and being able to see through the tree. So we're, we're actually seeing through that tree and into our background coloration in there. So that's all nicely handled. So as you can see, a two-step process, fairly easy to do. You just need to keep in mind what it is you're trying to do and look for variations to do that kind of a trick. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the rest of this. Now I want to have a nice sunset color in the background. So let's do a new layer right above that one. There we go. I'll be putting a gradient on this layer. Now I want to find the middle of my picture. So I'll take a horizontal ruler over here. Notice that if I right click here, I have this set up pixels. So these are pixels on the image. And if you pull a vertical guideline across, it's going to snap to the middle. There it is. There's the middle of my picture, vertical. On the horizontal, I want to have my middle of my gradient right where that sun is. So let's pull that down and then put it right on top of the sun. There we go. So center, the sun's almost centered, so that's pretty good. If you want to be real accurate, just go ahead and move this over until it's exactly on the sun. But, you know, centered is close enough on this one. And then a vertical one right on that sun, right there, and there we go. So I want a gradient coming from that point, bright yellow in the middle, going to a darker color out of the corners. So let's set up our colors, and I'll start off with just a bright yellow for the foreground. I already have a, a kind of a brick red here for the background. So yellow to, to a dark red. And we'll adjust this in just a second. I just want to have something in here to start off with. So go to the gradient tool and upper left hand corner is going to be your foreground to background color right there. So we'll double click on that and there's the foreground to background gradient. Now I need to do more to this. Click on the gradient itself and that brings up the gradient editor. Now we can come in here and we can adjust these color stops. Click on a color stop, you can see here's our color. Click on our color stop over here, there's another color. I'll start off with the yellow side, click on that, click on the yellow, and the yellow that I used was upper left hand corner, and I'm just going to type in the value down here, it's FFE, and then 402. So kind of an orangey kind of like a, you see it's right, right below the solid yellow band, just down a little bit, and choose OK. So there's our first yellow color right there. That's our first color stop. Let's put in another color stop. See as I move up here, I get the little kind of hand showing. When you see that, click on that, and there's your hand. Now I want the location for this one, which is right here, at 20%. So location 20%. Click on that color stop, and click on the color. And this is a little bit darker. In this case, it's FFC502. So a bit more orange than that one, as you can see. There we go. Choose OK. It's our second color stop. Now, a third color stop right in the middle someplace. And I want this right at 50%. Notice that each time I make a new one of these, it gives me the foreground color automatically. So that's why we're getting that yellow in there. We're on that color stop, you can see which one you're on because of the black triangle on the top there. 
Okay, click on color. And again, this is a little bit darker. This is my brick color. So it's a CF4102. That's the hexadecimal color for easiest way to do this, just by that number right down there. So CF4102, choose OK. Now on all of these numbers, I have a little text document on the support page for this. Click on the link in the description for the support page. And there's a little text document in there which lists the settings for the gradients. Okay, our final gradient down here, right hand side, that should be at 100%, clear to the right. Click on that one, and that should be what I had originally. Let me just double check. 5B, that should be 1702. I'm off by a little bit here. 1702. There we go. And choose OK. So we have kind of a soft yellow, a little more orangey, kind of a brick red, and a dark brick red in here for the gradient. Choose OK. So here's our gradient. Now go to the radial settings. You're probably going to be here where it says linear. Click on the second one so it says radial. And then click right where these two guidelines cross. Click and drag from there up to the upper right hand corner. Like that and that gives us a basic gradient. As you can see, the yellow is real small in here. It's also very, very circular. I want a real flat, wide gradient. So we can fix that right now. Let's first hide these guidelines. We're done with the guidelines. Go up to View, Uncheck Guides. And I'm going to zoom out a bit here. Hold the Alt key down and zoom this out a bit, just like that. And we're on this layer here. Now if you think of this as this one half here, see our Control handles, that's one half, and then here's another half out here, another half out here. We're going to be resizing this layer. And you can do this just as visually if you want to. Just grab this out and pull it out so that it's about halfway out like that. So that the space in here is about the same as the space here. It doesn't need to be exact, that's why I'm just doing it visually here. So about like that. So if this is our middle point, and I'll actually you know, bring the guides back in again. There we go. So here's our middle point. So this distance in here is about the same as that distance there. That's fine. Same thing on the left hand side. Pull that one out. Just like that. So this distance is about the same as that distance. And that gives us that nice wide sunset. You can come in here, you can play with this a little bit. If you want a little bit wider, just pull these a little bit further and you'll have a wider yellow orange. One thing to watch out for, as you pull this, notice the center right here, top and bottom. That's the center line of the gradient layer. Make sure that center line is on top of the blue center guideline. So as I pull this over here, on the right side, watch how that moves. I'll just pull it over until that's right in the center. That way the center of the gradient stays centered on the sun. So you want to make sure that that's the same. So the same size left and right and that these two guidelines, or these two control handles, are on that middle guideline. And choose OK. So we just stretched that gradient out to give us a nice soft gradient. OK, let's just hide those guides. There we go. And let's fit on screen again. Oh, not quite because it's showing us that stuff too. That's fine. I've got my magnifying glass. And zoom in a couple of times here. There we go. Looks pretty good. Now we're getting close. We have our nice sunset colors in here, a nice sunset gradient. We have the tree masked out nicely, but there's a couple of things wrong with this still. The colors don't match. The color of the foreground no longer matches the colors of the sky, and even the, the blacks and dark greens in the tree no longer match the color from the sky. So we need to make an adjustment on the coloration in there. So we'll do that. Go up here to this layer. This is our tree layer again. And layer new adjustment layer photo filter right there and where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask check that and choose OK now by default it's going to have the warming filter 85 and that's the one you want and then set the density over here to 71 percent one hit the enter key now I used 71% because that just gives me a nice match. Notice now how the coloration in here feels like it goes with the sunset colors up there. It's a very important step. 
to match the coloration in here. So 71% should do it. So if I hide that, there's the original. If I bring it back in again, the, notice how the colors just kind of blend now once we've added that warming filter above that photograph. Okay, we're almost done. Now notice here how we have a layer mask on the right hand side. The layer mask controls the coloration. Now when we colorized this thing, it also colorized the sun in there. So it made the sun more yellow. And we lost our nice bright white part of the middle of the sun. We can fix that with the layer mask. You can use the layer mask to hide parts of the photo filter. So we're on the layer mask layer. Go to the magnifying glass. Let's just zoom in on that sun. Here we go. And I'll paint black on the layer mask. Again, look for the light blue outline. There it is. If it's over here, just double click on the layer mask so you see that light blue outline. Okay, I want black this time, so go to black, grab the paintbrush. That's way too big. I'll pull that down quite a bit. Let's see. Maybe 14, 11. 11 looks pretty good. Now, if I paint in here on the layer mask with black, I can bring back in some of the original colors in there. So we're not losing it as much. You can kind of see that because I bring up into these edges in here. Kind of brings back in those softer colors on those rays. And then finally right there, I want a nice white hot spot right here. So I'll do that. That needs to be on the tree layer or above the tree layer. I'm just going to do it right on the tree layer itself. And it's probably over in here as well. So if I come in here, and again, white shows this and black hides this. So let's just make sure that we're seeing the photograph here and not the background. So let's change over to white, and we're on the tree layer mask. And there we go. Do the exact same thing. And just paint in here a little bit like that. So I'm now only seeing the coloration in here from the tree picture and not from the background. So I took two adjustments. One was to block out the photo filter color right there. So we did that. And the second one was to make sure that we're seeing the sun from the tree picture and not seeing the, tr the sunset colors from in behind. And there we go. All right, let's now just back out, hold the Alt key down, zoom back out, and there we go. There's our sunset colors. Let's see how this worked out. I'll take the background image, let's just make a copy of that. I'll pull that to the top. So there's the original, and there's our new change. Original and change. And there you go. That's how to do a very tricky masking around tree leaves in here to get this kind of a nice coloration change or sky change behind a tree with leaves. Now if you're unhappy with the amount of tree that was masked out, that's going to be controlled by the threshold layer. So if you think that you have lost too much of your tree, come back and do another threshold layer. You know, take the replace color layer, duplicate that, do threshold again, and change your adjustment a little bit. I think this looks nice, so I'm happy with this change. So again, there's our original, and there's the sky. Change over to sunset colors, which we did manually, and sunset coloration in there. Let me just float this, float the window. There we go. And let's zoom in a bit so you can see a little bit better view of this final. And there we go. So that's how to change the sky behind a tree. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 